Okay, here we are in my basement, and this is the main beam that supports the floor in the living room and dining room. And what we have are some temporary, supposed to be temporary columns here, one right there. And then over here, they jacked it up for whatever reason. So I'm gonna take out that column and this column and support this beam permanently. And we're gonna do it right now. So when I did the living room, dining room remodel, I actually ended up lowering this beam because they ended up jacking it up uh, really high. And this is the, the post that supports the load carrying post that goes to the LVL up there. And that goes all the way to the end. And eventually I might actually do an LVL here, but the difference in cost is um, kind of a lot and a lot more work. So right now I'm basically gonna take a lolly column like this and put it right here to replace this. And then over here, I'm just gonna fill this in with mortar. And then I'm gonna put a couple uh, two by eights and support it down to here. And when I did all of this, I ended up taking all the weight off of here. That's doing nothing. And this wall can actually come right out. So eventually when I move my workbench, I can open this right up. So I'll have from here to here all open, which would be nice. So that's why I really wanna do this. So I'm gonna start with this one because uh, I'm actually going to use this over there to jack that up so I can put those pieces in. But I'm going to start by taking these out because I'm going to use those to temporarily support that. And then I'll get some to support this side. And then I'll take this out and put the column in and drop it down. actually going to keep this around because this is a huge piece of lumber. Might be able to do something with it. Oh, it's heavy. And it's old, which means it's a lot stronger than lumber nowadays, in my opinion. I'm just going to secure these together, make them a little stronger. Actually putting them like this makes them even stronger. Okay, I'll put pieces on both sides of this post. And then I have this piece that'll go on this side. Oh wow, that worked out. I didn't even have to cut that. Cool. I'm just gonna secure that so it doesn't flop around and then I can use shims up here to support it and do the same thing over here. I don't know what happened here, by the way. <laughs> it's not great, but there's plenty of material left, so I'm not too worried about it. But yeah, that's a mystery. Don't know. I'll make sure these are relatively straight. They don't have to be absolutely perfect, but want to be straight. Then I'm going to secure these to this block. And then that way I'll know because I'm going to jack this up first, both of these at the same time, obviously. And then I'll be able to see how much of a gap goes in here. And then I can cut my, my piece a little short and lower these down right onto that lolly column. And I actually made a 
much more detailed video on how to install a lolly column. I'll leave a link in the description over that if you want some more details. And this piece. Perfect. Wow. Like I meant to do it. Okay, we're supported on that side, supported on that side. Before I start cranking this up, I'm gonna take a measurement right here, down to here, and there's a footing, so that's good. That's what you should have. I don't know how thick it is, um, but it's you know been here for a long time. And by the way, do I think that these being temporary, quote unquote, will fail? Not really, I don't think that, but really what these posts are meant for is if you have a large piece of furniture or say you're putting a hot tub in the middle of a room, they're made to support, help support a load like that along with the main supports. They're really not meant to be the main supports for your floor. Seventy-two and three quarters. Right there, right here. I basically want this height to be exactly where this is, although up and down doesn't matter too much if it's a 16th or even an eighth, uh, but I wanna get it as close to this as possible. So I'm gonna cut that column. Now what this lolly column is, is concrete with a very thin piece of metal on the outside. So I just gotta cut through that metal and then I can break the end off. Oh, I will hook on to the end of this. 72 and three quarters is right here. I also have to account for the plates on the bottom and top. So I'm gonna hold them together and hold them right at that line. Mark it right here. And that is the actual mark that I want to cut. Just make a couple marks, then I can connect them all. Now before I cut that, I'm gonna measure one more time just to be sure. So There's a couple different ways to cut this. I'm gonna use a grinder with a metal cutoff wheel, and they actually make these um, big things that look like a huge pipe cutter that you clamp on here and you roll it around and score it until you get through the metal. But I don't have one of those, so I'm gonna use this. see I've cut all the way through the metal. You can see some concrete in there. There's my original mark and then moved it up for the plates. Now, the fun part. I'm just gonna take a cold chisel, which is made for concrete, and I'm gonna clean this up. Pretty good. Pretty flat all the way around. Nice. I'm just gonna test fit this. Why not? One thing to keep in mind, these are really heavy. I'm happy with that. Okay, I'm gonna start raising this up very slowly, carefully. I don't have to go up a lot. I'm gonna hear a lot of cracking. See, that's loose. Okay. Another way to do this would be to have a bottle jack on this side with some two by fours pushing up and a bottle jack on this side, but that would require two bottle jacks. And I think it would be a little more effort because you have to 
go up and down and jack both sides up so that they don't um, these don't get loose and fall and keep going keep this stuff tight A lot of cracking now. Just barely. I could hammer it in if I wanted. So let's go up a little more. I want to go up more because I want to get these shims where they need to be. And then once I drop this down onto the shims, this is going to crush a little bit. So I'm still going to have to be up a little further. Can be nerve wracking. All right, loosen that all the way. There's no weight on that. All of it's on those two by fours. Take our plate, put it on the bottom, and then put our plate on the top. And this might be tight. It's okay. I had my hammer. Oh. Okay. Oh, look at that. Uh, I'm going to center it. All I'm going to do is put two nails in. That all looks perfect. There we go. That's loose and that's tight. So the weight from here and here, sitting on the column. There we go. And that's how the column sits on that plate in between those little nubs. And you can attach this if you want to, but the weight of the beam and the floor is going to keep this from moving around, so I'm not worried about it. Okay, now we can take this pole jack and put it over here, raise this up, take care of the side. I've got the adjustable column set up here, right there. Really, I should be able to just fill this in and let it sit there like it normally would. Um, but I just don't want it to move, so I'm going to put a couple pieces in here. I am going to fill this just to fill that gap. I would put a piece of pressure treated in there, but you can see there's a bunch of crap in there and it's uneven, so I'm just going to fill it up and the beam will be supported right here. I'm going to mix up some quick setting cement I had left over. I'm just going to pile this in there. Here we go. I tucked that cement right in there. And this is more for, you know, filling the gap, uh, more, more for filling the gap than it is for structural, but it'll definitely help. So I'm gonna put a piece of pressure treated down like this. And down here, well, I got some cement. <laughs> and down here, you'll notice there's a little bit of a, an edge right here but I'm not gonna chisel that out because I don't wanna cause any issues with water coming in here. I don't know if that was for sealing reasons, 
So I'm just gonna cut the bottom piece at an angle and then I'll cut it to length and put it in there. And I'm not gonna put a bottom plate here. I don't think I need it. I'm not gonna attach the bottom this way. Again, the weight will be enough to hold this in place. And I'm gonna put a couple screws into these pieces of wood afterwards. Let's see if we can get this in. I'm gonna jack this up just a little bit. I already jacked it up a little bit, but I wanna go a little bit more. I don't wanna go crazy, I don't wanna crack drywall or anything. Okay, all the weight is on that thing. Let's see. Yep. Well, I'm gonna tighten this back up for now because I'm gonna take this out completely. Nice big piece of metal. Might be able to use that for something. It's heavy. I'm gonna put a couple long exterior screws in there into those blocks. That's it. Okay, we got the temporary column out and we got the permanent column in there. We took this wall down, took that big wooden beam out of here, the big column, and then we took this temporary column out from here, filled in that gap with some cement and got two two by eights Supporting that right in the middle. A couple of things before I wrap this up. Uh, right here, I probably didn't need that extra adjustable column, but that's kind of how I am. I tend to overthink things, and I wanted to put both of these pieces in before I got rid of those. So I was able to get this piece in, take that column out, then put this one in, and then drop everything down on it. And this dried up nice filled all that in and whenever you attach wood to concrete whenever it's sitting on concrete you want to use pressure treated because pressure treated is less susceptible to moisture and insects and that kind of thing it won't rot out like uh, regular wood will speaking of moisture you might have noticed some staining right here um, that problem has been fixed my driveway is out here and in the winter, the snow would build up and then it would melt and come in here. But I fixed that on the outside, filled in those gaps. So as far as that goes, that is all set. I hope you enjoyed this video. Maybe you learned something that you can use on your own house for your own home repair. Let me know in the comments if you did. And if you haven't yet, definitely consider subscribing for more content like this. And speaking of more content, you can click here-ish and hereish and check those videos out if you want to i have a ton of home repair content on my channel and plenty more to come we'll see you next time thanks for watching